Um, and uh, one last thing that just came to mind is um, we've got a lot of people that are planning to uh, join us to tape out on Tiny T- Tape Out 2. Um, and they, 60% of people said that they were interested in using an HDL. So presumably people have come from doing simulations or do it probably using a bit of FPGA work. So is there any advice you would give to somebody who was like um, converting an FPGA design to an ASIC design? Because I think for me that the, like the, the, the most crucial one is with FPGAs, you can almost always guarantee that the registers are going to get initialized to zero and you can have these initial begin blocks. Yeah, but true. With an ASIC, so, you have to have a, a good reset that sets everything to zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I think that's... A, so the uh, the presence of uh, an explicit reset on the flip-flop that actually needed for the design to work um, is something that I recommend doing in FPGA as well because even in FPGA, even though true the uh, registers might be initialized uh, would be initialized to some defined state um, after configuration, you know if you use a PLL or stuff like that your clock is not stable at the beginning, which means technically you can't start clocking your logic without failing, without a uh, timing violation, which means it's always a good idea to hold every critical flip-flop in reset until the PLL has locked, which requires the design to have an explicit reset anyway. Uh, something else that sh- not shocks me, but like uh, it's very different between FPGA and, um, and in and uh, ASIC design, um, is that in FPGA, you know, you have your, your, I mean, typically you have your LUTs and a register right after, like that's like the typical architecture, um, which means that you pretty much get registers for free. Like you can heavily pipeline your design and it doesn't cost you that much because the register is there anyway. Uh, in ASIC, that's not the case. Like the, if you look at the logic cell that implement a register versus the, the the logic cells that implement like an end or like a logic function, yeah, the registers is like many times bigger, which means that if you heavily pipeline, your design is going to explode in size. And, you know, the the logic delay isn't that much, which you can get away with much more logic between your flip-flops than, uh, than in your FPGA, basically. That's, that's, one, that's one of the things when, when I you know, redesign stuff for uh, for ASIC that I change a lot is because, yeah, in, in FPGA, I'm more constrained sometimes by the speed, especially since I work a lot with ICE 40 and stuff like that, which are really slow um, FPGAs. Uh, so I tend to pipeline a lot. And in the uh, ASIC design, like the, the design size would explode. So, yeah. And then if you're fancy, you can start playing with latches instead of flip-flop, but then you really have to know what you're doing, so... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not good for tiny tape out. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, we see, we did see some interesting uh, submissions for tiny tape out one. So, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely. Like from Gate. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, thanks very much, Sylvan, for your time. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, and, thank you for having me. Um, yeah. See you. See. Hopefully, see you soon. Yeah. See you soon.